Today we're in the fruit kit. We're in the fruit kitchen. <laughs> wow, that's a new one. Honestly, I can't think of anything with fruit that I don't like, especially when it comes to desserts. Fruit's great. It's a it's Mother Nature's dessert. Fruit is super versatile because you could macerate it, you could make a compote out of it, you could fold it into a cake. There's so many options. Today we're in the test kitchen. We're making fruit forward desserts. Yep. That's it. That's what we're doing. This today. is gonna be a dessert. Today we're working with cantaloupe, sugar, and evaporated milk. These three ingredients make one of the desserts that I grew up eating as a child. I'm mean, super well known in the Philippines. It is famously known as ice candy. On the streets, there's vendors that are selling ice candies in plastic individual bags that are just tied at the top. Um, which are similar to Otter Pops or Freeze Pops that you probably ate growing up. It's just like summertime in a dessert. I chose cantaloupe because it is perfect when it is ripe in season. This one feels really great. It feels heavy, which means that there's a lot of juice with it. You can smell the cantaloupe as well. I like to cut the top first. And then this gives you a base so that the cantaloupe doesn't roll around. And you just cut it down the middle and you have a beautiful cantaloupe. You can see the green outside. If your cantaloupe isn't ripe enough, the green is actually further up. So once you've scooped out all the seeds and you peel off the layer of skin on the cantaloupe, um, I'm actually gonna cut the cantaloupe again, just so that it's easier for me to grate. And we're gonna grate. I want the cantaloupe obviously to be ripe, but I don't want it to be mushy. You still wanna be able to grate it on a grater. Just add sugar and then just start mixing gently. Macerating is adding sugar to your fruit um, to help break it down. Next, I'm gonna add our evaporated milk. In the Philippines, um, they don't have access to a lot of fresh milk. So this is the substitution that they would use. It's a little bit sweet. Um, it's definitely creamier, uh, more on the note of like a whole milk. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to help cut a little bit of the sweetness, but it's really up to you. Oh, that's so good. The sugar is melted in there, so you don't have any like granules. The bags that I was talking about earlier look like this. So I'm just pouring this in. I'm making sure that I'm getting some of the cantaloupe in there. So you don't wanna fill it up too full because you still wanna be able to tie it. And the way to tie it is you just twist it. After you twist, you've got this much to tie your ice candy nice and tight. The best way to freeze them is to just put them on a sheet tray, line them up, just freeze them till they're solid, um, and then they're ready to go. This is our finished product of the ice candy. So there's two ways that you can eat your ice candy. Obviously you can snip with scissors off the top, or you can use your teeth, how we grew up eating. <laughs> this is silly. Yeah, and then you just, It's super just fresh. The cantaloupe tastes like cantaloupe in this. It's not masked by the other things that we've added. It's nice and cool. It's really refreshing. The texture is really icy, but it's still creamy from the evaporated milk. If you have other fruits as well, don't be afraid to get creative and make your own ice candies. So today I'll be transforming these wild blueberries into a beautiful sorbet. They are so juicy and so much sweeter than the store-bought cultivated berries that you can get. A lot of wild blueberries actually grow around my house, so I collect them in the summertime and try to freeze some so I can have access to delicious forage juicy berries all year round. I'm actually using a food processor to churn the sorbet, um, which is a really nice hack for those of you that might not have an ice cream maker handy. So I've got this beautiful Tahitian vanilla bean here. It's kind of gives you that air of creaminess, even though there's no cream in it. If all you have at home is uh, vanilla extract, that's perfectly fine. However, I wanted to go a little extra. They're like floral in, in terms of the aromatics, which is really nice. And I think plays into the freshness and the summertime feel of this dish. Oh yeah. All of that, we're gonna get that into the food processor. I have Meyer lemons. I would say it's a little brighter, but less acidic than your typical lemon. And it's also a little bit sweeter. It's got more of a juicy punch, which is really delicious. And not only is this adding like a nice acidity, it also just helps to break down the frozen blueberries a little bit. So now we're gonna add these wild blueberries to the processor. And we're going to add some cane sugar. I'm also adding a pinch of salt. 
I think that just brings the sweetness down a little bit and again, creates more of a balanced atmosphere in this food processor. So we're gonna pulse this uh, until it all comes together. It should take about five to six minutes. So I'm looking for the texture to be really smooth, um, which it's not right now. It's actually quite chunky. So we're just gonna keep working this. It's just a matter of patience while that texture really develops into the consistency that we're looking for. Five hours later. <laughs> now we're now we're talking. That's the business right there. Okay. And at this point, I'm really just going to test it for consistency and see if it's somewhere that I like. It's very refreshing. Very. All right. Look at her. And I'm just spreading it evenly. Now we're just gonna cover this with a little plastic wrap over the top so that we don't get any like freezer burn or anything like that. So this is gonna go into the freezer and it'll set over the course of five to six hours, or you can just set it and forget it and eat it tomorrow morning. No crystallization as you can see. So we're gonna plate this up and get a nice scoop here. I'm adding a little poppy seeds over the top. Honestly, it just plates really nicely and it adds a little crunch factor. You always need the crunch factor and a little bit of fresh mint. All right, and here we have the perfect summer treat, the wild blueberry Meyer lemon sorbet. Mm. It's intensely blueberry, like blueberry is really shining here. And of course the Meyer lemon gets a, a steak in this as well, <laughs> really hits you on the back end. Sweet, but not too sweet. I'm loving it. I mean, you could really do this with any fruit and that's the beauty of it, but wild blueberries are in. Mm. I always, I always tend to be drawn towards like a fruit dessert. And this is something that I kind of came up with, the classic half lobe of mango. Score it and then pop it out and eat it like, you know, like the whole world does. It's the best way to eat a mango. I was like, why don't I just try it with a little hot cast iron, a little olive oil, get a little sear on there, and then scrape it out and put it in over some ice cream. It's just a really great way to kind of change the flavor profile of, of a classic fruit. So the fruit today we're gonna be using is the mango. I believe it's like the Atkins mango is the sign I see in the old supermarkets. I don't want it firm, but I don't want it super, super mushy because I want it to kind of get a little bit of a char to it. So we washed our mango and, um, you know, get an organic one if you can. We're gonna try to cut it off into the big load. And if you hit the pit, you can kind of just roll with it, you know? That's nice. Quality control. For the sear, we want to keep it kind of just, you know, as flat as we can. I got a little bit of my olive oil. I got my cast iron. This is preheated. Um, I just turned it back on to a low. I don't want it to be super, super hot off the bat and like burn it. Start off at a little medium. And we'll add just a little bit of oil there. Then I'll add the mango and just give it a little, little, little smear around. And I'm just going to keep a little bit, of, little bit of pressure on there. And I just want to keep it moving a little bit. The one recipe I did put in my cookbook Field Notes for Food Adventures, um, is uh, grilled stone fruits that were kind of seared up. A very similar application, actually. So like other stone fruits work really great for this. I've used peaches, plums, you know, uh, uh, nectarines, whatever you can get your hand. Cherries are actually pretty nice as well, too. So I'll see, we're getting a little bit of char. So I'll put a little more pressure on that inside. I'll put a little more oil. You could definitely do this on a grill. You could use a really ripping campfire stone if you wanted to. So we got a nice char on there. I'm just gonna hit it with a little nub of butter there, all right? We're just gonna, we're gonna whirl that. We're gonna whirl that around right there. You know, in that caramelization process, the butter would have burned by then. Uh, so adding it right at the end to just finish it, kind of let it brown off real quick with that olive oil and the mango sugars, give it a little kind of brown buttery kind of finish. Oh yeah, bud. Here we go, we're moving. Hot. So now we're gonna do the classic uh, crosshatch cuts before we scrape it out over ice cream. Well, look at that custard, e. Oh my God, I just want to eat it like this kind of. Like look how savory that looks. It almost looks like a squash or like a buttered up sweet potato or something. Put a little, little salt, little olive oil, nice little smear of butter on there too. I just want to let it cool a little bit. I don't want it to be too, too, too hot and make a little ice cream soup. That, you know, I, I, that's, not what I, that's not what I'm personally going for. Back to the mango, back to the ice cream. We're gonna go a little vanilla bean and chocolate. I love the, the combination of chocolate and mango. Always have, I'm not the only one. One scoop for you. Oh, that's nice. Beautiful. All right, let's go for the scoop. Oh my God. You stop it, get in there. A Little bit of flakers. Yeah, ready to go. You know, I'm gonna start with chocolate. 
nice little nice little bite there. I I, I reckon so. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, I really like that. It's a very it's it's really nice. It is kind of makes like a it's just like a charred kind of like a mangoey compote that kind of melts around the hard ice cream. And I think I think it's really good. Yeah, charred up mango. Scoop it on your favorite ice cream. Put a little olive oil and salt on it, and uh, you're doing all right. Fruit is just great as it is. You don't really need to do much to it, so I generally like to eat it straight. That being said, um, if I do go overboard at the farmer's market and I have like a bunch of fruit, baking it is a really great way to use it all up. So I'm gonna use the raspberries to make a cake and then we're gonna put them over this lemon ricotta cake and you're gonna get this super plush, supple cake and these like this jammy swirl of berries going through it. It's so good. My wedding cake was a lemon raspberry cake because I just love it so much. This recipe is also really great because you can use any berry you like. Blueberries or even blackberries would be so delicious. So I'm starting with the berries so that I give them some time to macerate and release all their juices, but they're gonna go on the cake at the very end right before baking. I'm using a fork to combine the berries with the sugar just so that I like pierce them a little bit. You want to keep mixing until you see that the sugar is completely hydrated and like raspberry juice. Some of the berries are whole, some of them are a little bit more mushy. This is where you wanna be. So now I'm gonna get started on the cake itself and work on the dry ingredients. So I have flour in the bowl and then I'm gonna go in with baking soda and baking powder for lift and then um, kosher salt just to balance out the sweetness. I'm gonna whisk this together just to disperse the leavener. So now we're gonna start with the wet ingredients. So I have sugar in a bowl and we're gonna start by perfuming the sugar um, with lemon zest. One lemon will usually give you about like a heaped tablespoon of zest. And I'm gonna use my fingertips to work the sugar and the lemon zest together. The abrasive quality of the sugar is gonna help extract the oils um, from the lemon zest. All of the sugar in the bowl now is gonna like taste like lemon and it's gonna just carry that lemon flavor throughout the cake. Um, it really makes a difference in my opinion. You can see like a, like a pale yellow tint to the sugar. It feels a little bit more sandy than it did like straight. And so that's how I know I'm good. Now I'm gonna add the olive oil, the vanilla extract and the eggs and whisk that up. Now I'm going to just cut that same lemon in half and juice it. So the ricotta is gonna add um, a little bit of fat, but it's mostly here for texture and flavor. Um, it's gonna give us a really unique crumb to the finished cake, less like a sponge cake and more moist and soft with like some good structure, like uh, say a pound cake. You definitely wanna use whole milk ricotta. Don't like skimp on the fat here. Um, that is gonna help with the texture of the cake too. Now I'm going to um, mix in the dry ingredients until they're nice and combined. You just wanna make sure all the flour is hydrated. The ricotta is um, a little bit lumpy, so you don't need to get like a completely smooth batter. When the cake bakes, the ricotta is gonna melt into the cake. Um, you're not gonna see it, but it's fine if you see it now. Now I'm gonna pour the batter into a greased and lined um, nine inch cake tin. So it's been like five, 10 minutes and you can already see that the berries have released some juice. They're like looking syrupy. I'm gonna just spoon um, the berries over the top of the cake. You wanna sort of just get them everywhere. This is all about the raspberries. I'm ready to take it to the oven. It's going in at 350 for about 45, 50 minutes. What you're looking for visually is for the berries to have sunken into the cake a little bit and it'll have risen pretty significantly too. The cake is ready. It baked for like 45, 50 minutes. It's also been cooling in the cake tin. So we're ready to flip it out and eat it. This is my raspberry lemon ricotta cake. I am gonna cut myself a slice. I'm so excited. You can see the macerated raspberries got really nice and jammy over here, and then they sort of sunk into the cake. Mm, so good. This cake is doing everything I want it to. There's a nice bright lemony flavor and the raspberries are like super strong in this. There's a decent amount of structure to the cake. It's soft and moist, but it's not like spongy at all. And that's because of the ricotta. This really reminds me of the cake I had at my wedding and makes me so happy.